pre-snap, and those the, both offensive tackles are holding machines. Um, so I thought from a consistency perspective, they weren't going to get back to the quarterback counter, quarterback power. I mean, it was really fun to watch. Um, that's a long way of saying that, that Kansas City, I think, is a completely different team than they were during the season. More consistent. They're not explosive. And somewhere Valdez Scantling came up with a couple of catches that made a difference when he only had 21 catches in the regular season. And you juxtapose that with San Francisco. And I kind of look at them right now like I looked at Philadelphia. When Philly was like 7-1, 8-1, 9-1, people were asking me, like, they don't look real good. And I'm saying you can look at that two ways. You can compliment them for continuing to find ways to win games without their best A game. Or you can say sooner or later, say sooner or later, this is going to hurt them. You can't keep like this in the NFL. And for Philadelphia, they fell off a ledge. And now San Francisco, I can compliment them and say you've done a hell of a job winning two games here without your A game. But if you don't bring that A game, I don't think you're going to win against Kansas City. So that's a long way of saying that I, I, I enjoy this conversation and I'm not sure which way it's going to cut Sunday. <laughs> I'm with you, Mike. I don't either. But what I do know is what you said uh, that to me is what I've been preaching is that Buffalo game was, to me, a blueprint that I think Kyle can take. Now, I know Buffalo was a 12 personnel team with Kincaid and with, with Kincaid and, and, and Dawson Knox. But, you know, they can get to 12, too, moving you check out or McCaffrey out. But spreading them out, Kansas City, to me, opened up a lot of running lanes. And we know Chris Jones didn't play good in that game. His pad level was way too high. They were pushing him around up front. Do you think that Kyle will take that approach and spread him out? It's interesting, Mike, because that's kind of where I've been thinking, too. Are, 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 is he going to stay and, and, and run the football under center, uh, play action, what they do, what their bread and butter is? Or, what, you know, it's a little bit easier to define – where pressure is coming from when you spread it out at a gun. And, and you can yep. run the ball at a gun, too. So I'm intrigued to see whether or not, gonna, how much he's going to try and spread them out because Kansas City's had problems against the run just like San Francisco. I, you know who I think is a pretty good football player that, that I don't hear anybody talking about for? There are actually two of them for Kansas City. One is Drew Tranquil, who I'm still pissed off I didn't draft with the Raiders. <laughs> um, and... and the, the second one is this rookie safety, number 27, they have named Connor, who they use covering tight ends. They use them in the box. They use them deep. I think, to answer your question, Mike, I think Kyle is going to try to do some of that. But I give Spag credit. I think that defense has got a lot of versatility. They can play five defensive backs. They can play six defensive backs. I just think they're susceptible to the run also. Mike Mayock joining us here live on the Lombardi line, VEASAN, the sports betting network. Is there anybody from an offensive standpoint that you just can foresee having a big day that people should be on the lookout for in this game? Oh, man. I mean, you know, from the Kansas City perspective, Mahomes hasn't thrown an interception. I think that I think the tight ends are critical in this game. Um, Kelsey's been on, on fire. Forget his drops in the regular season. You, you just put that out of your mind. I mean, I think they're going to have trouble with Kelsey. Um, they they got to make sure in key situations he doesn't beat them. And then with San Francisco, it just depends, to, to Mike's point, how they're going to play this game. You know, they, they've got so many different offensive weapons, but I do believe George Kittle is going to be a piece of this. I think both tight ends are going to have an awful lot to say before this thing's over. Yeah, I do too, Mike. And we know Kyle wants to attack the middle of the field in the passing game. I think Kittle's going to be the wild card in this game because I think he's got to play well. And I think the other part of the game, and we just had we just had Chuck Pagano on, I think the second down call sheet for Kyle, if he can stay out of third down, in that game you did in Buffalo, Buffalo was in 14 third downs. They converted seven of them. Now, we know Josh can make those unique plays with his feet and do some things that maybe, you know, the 49ers don't call quarterback runs and quarterback draws. But I do think that, that that's the style that has to play. And I think Purdy, and you could speak to this, I think Purdy can handle 
anything that they put on his plate in this game offensively. I think that's Purdy's strength. Uh, he's not going to be able to run the football physically like Buffalo did, Purdy himself. But I think Purdy's strength is you can put as much as you want mentally on him. You can put him under center. You can put him in pistol. You can put him in gun. In his timing and anticipation, especially to your point in the middle of the field against this defense, I, I think it's a big deal. Now, Purdy's got to play at a certain level, too, you know, because the guy on the other side, Mahomes, I think is the glue that keeps that whole thing together. So, Purdy, you know, he didn't throw, he didn't throw the football real well in the rain. Um, he's just – I don't think anything's going to bother him, Mike. I don't think he's that kind of personality, but, but I think he's got to start fairly quickly. And, and they've got to understand that he's going to make the right decisions and throw it wherever it needs to go. You know firsthand how, how great the facilities are here in Vegas, and the, the Chiefs have been the beneficiary of getting to use those this week. Meanwhile, the 49ers have had some issues at practice with it regard with regards to their practice field. Um, we know last year the Super Bowl, the field was an issue. Are, are we reading too much into this this week, or do you think that that could have an impact come Super Bowl Sunday? Yeah, I don't think Kyle would let them on the field if he thought it was a safety hazard. And I think from my perspective, we're, we're probably making too much of it. Yeah, I agree with that. I, but I, I'll tell you what we're not making too much of, Mike, and you know you've interviewed with the man before he passed away. Al would have never left the Chiefs in his building. <laughs> that I do know. So what's your call on the game? I know you're like us. You're undecided. Where are you thinking? Where are you leaning? Say what's a lean? I think a lean for me is that um, I think sometimes it's too easy just to say pick the great quarterback, right? I think we all do that yeah. sometimes. Um, I, but at, at the end of the day, Kansas City was minus 11 turnover differential in the season. Another reason I, I was like they're not going to get the championship game. Uh, they were plus three against Baltimore. They were even with Miami. They were down one against Buffalo, and that one turnover on the goal line almost cost them a game. Um, so – I really believe this game's going to be somewhere in the low 20s to mid 20s. And if I had to lean somewhere, I'm leaning Steve Spagnuolo's defense, number one. I think that doesn't get enough credit that Steve does. And I think if, if Patrick Mahomes has the football with, you know, under a minute left, I think they win. And they got to score a field goal or a touchdown. I think they win the game. I'm leaning against Add another Chiefs one to the list, there Michael. We go. I agree. It's <laughs> hard to disagree. It is. Michael, it is. thank you so much. Yes, thank Reddy's you. Reddy's Coffee Shop, the next time I see you, we need that conversation, Michael. It might have to be a beer, Mike, but thanks very much. <laughs> I, I love, love it. it. <laughs> That's Mike Mayock. Uh, again, we're just getting started here. Hour two of the Lombardi line. We'll get to some big news and notes around the league when we return. VSIN is thrilled to introduce a new vsin.com tailor-made to the evolved needs of today's sports bettors. Our upgraded navigation streamlines your journey, allowing you to swiftly access articles, videos, and podcasts. Whether you're tuning in live or catching up on your favorite shows, everything is just a click away. VSIN.com guarantees a fluid and responsive experience across all devices, ensuring you stay connected wherever you are. We have enhanced tools such as our betting splits and expert picks and introduce innovative features like parlay and odds calculators, all designed to make you a sharper better. Our how to bet section is perfect for beginners covering the fundamentals, while seasoned bettors can delve into our advanced betting strategies for the competitive edge you've been looking for. Sign up for free on VSIN.com or become a VSIN Pro subscriber where you can unlock unlimited access to every tool, expert picks, and insight that make VSIN the sports betting network. Gear up for the ultimate betting event of the year with VSIN's Super Bowl betting guide, exclusive to VSIN Pro subscribers. Get access to expert picks, including best bets from every member of the VSIN staff. Unlock articles and analysis for all the prop markets and strategy breakdowns you won't find anywhere else. Give yourself an edge this Super Bowl and get the VSIN Super Bowl betting guide by becoming a VSIN Pro subscriber today at VSIN.com slash pro. That's V-S-I-N dot com slash pro. Hold up, instantly? DraftKings showing up big for the Super Bowl. You got me feeling like, like Jimmy Johnson in the 90s. Only thing else I gotta say is, how about the missed and bonus bets? Yeah! 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 
Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and turn a $5 Super Bowl bet into 200 instantly in bonus bets. The crown is yours. Nailed it. Hey guys, Sean Stacking the Money Green here with my partner in picks, Ryan Real Money Kramer from the Sports Gambling Podcast. To let you know, alert the missus, date night is canceled this football season. Instead of checking out the latest rom com, tune into VEASAN every Friday night for our props, picks, and best bets in the National Football League. That's right, the Sports Gambling Podcast is live every Friday, 9 p.m. Pacific on VSIN, the Sports Betting Network. Nobody covers the biggest betting event of the year like VEASAN. And for VEASAN Super Week, we're broadcasting live from three locations across Las Vegas, the site of Super Bowl 58. Our analysts are breaking down line movement, prop markets, injuries, and more to make sure you have all the info and analysis you need to bet the big game. Become a VEASAN Pro subscriber to gain access to betting splits, our Super Bowl betting guide picks from all the VEASAN experts, and more. Head to VEASAN.com slash pro. This is the Lombardi Line, live from Media Row for Super Bowl 58 on VSIN, the sports betting network. It's DraftKings Network Super Week. Michael Lombardi and Stormy Bonatoni with you as we welcome you back to the Lombardi Line. This segment is brought to you by Bear Aspirin, the official sponsor of Fans Hearts. And because we have had so many guests on the program today, all of which fantastic great it's been wonderful absolutely yes. we have not had an opportunity to get into a lot of actual like news and notes of the day which could actually be noise michael if you know what i'm saying yeah. so why don't we roll that open oh. is it news corleone is a man who insists on hearing bad news immediately or just noise are you gonna act like this is news just noise let's separate the impactful from the insignificant with one simple question news or noise yeah, Michael, news or noise? All right, you fire away. What do you got for us today? We had some coaching updates yesterday that yes. we haven't gotten to discuss yet. 18 years after he last served as the Cowboys defensive coordinator, Mike Zimmer is on his way back, expected to replace Dan Quinn as he moves on to be the head coach of the Washington Commanders. And when Jerry Jones was on the red carpet last night at NFL Honors, he told Did reporters... You I did actually talk to Jerry oh, briefly, yeah, um, but he said to another reporter, said, literally, it is time to get things worked out right now. I mean, as we are speaking, I've got phones with me and working on it to get a deal done with Mike Zimmer. News or noise that he's headed back to, D to Dallas. I was just told two minutes ago by somebody walking by that it's not done yet, that it's going oh. back and forth. And, and a lot of it is because of the McCarthy contract, right? I think it gets done because Zimmer, I'm told, really wants to do it. And I don't think money's the issue. I think length is so the issue. It would be news if it's more than one year. I think it would be. I think it would be. And I think Jerry's drawing a hard line here. I think Jerry's a tough negotiator. People say, well, he's got so much money. Look, guys that are billionaires, they understand how to make money. They don't give money away. They're not a billionaire when you give money away. So it's news. I do think it gets done, but it's not done yet. The important question I asked Jerry Jones yesterday because we were just we were just having fun out there asking off the wall questions. I asked him who would play him in a movie version Ooh, of question. himself. He said Tommy Lee Jones. I think that's probably right. I think that could work. I, I love Tommy Lee Jones. I mean, how good is he? He goes from No Country for Old Men yeah. to you know the, uh, the what was he in that. Uh, with the when he was the, the fugitive okay the fugitive and then he's really good in one of my favorite movies he's really really good in jfk where he plays yep. clay shaw absolutely i actually recently watched that movie did Old you Kevin really costner i watched it a, a couple weeks ago oh i got more for you to watch on that subject. i am about it <laughs> um let's keep it rolling here because more interesting conversation coming from the red carpet prior to nfl honors yesterday jets owner woody johnson kind of slammed zach wilson and put some apparent pressure on his head coach with some comments including you need a backup quarterback we didn't have one last year yeah. and the discussions I've had the last couple months they've seen me about as mad as I can be with what's going on with the offense particularly going on to say I think they all got the message news or noise oh I think that's news I think basically and he just doubled down on it I think if they start 0 and 3 or if they start 1 and 5 
there's two coaches out there lurking. They're mm -hmm. lurking. They're flying around. <laughs> What's what he do? Does he call Mike Vrabel on the phone? You know, all Jet fans think Belichick would never want to come back and work for him, which might be true. I don't know. I've never asked him that question. However, that was a different ownership group then than it is now. But I think he clearly just said, OK, fellas, the pressure's on. Sure. We'll see if you can handle it. 18 and 33, the Jets are under Robert Sala, the longest postseason drought in Major League Sports in North America where things sit right now. Let's go to a team that has not had that issue in the postseason, and the Kansas City Chiefs, as head coach Andy Reid, ahead of the Super Bowl, said, quote, I never feel like an underdog going into any game. Of course, the Chiefs are getting two come Super Bowl Sunday. News or noise? I think this is news. He's right. He doesn't feel like because why does he say that? Because the great Mickey Corker and the former high school coach for Bill Parcells would tell Bill Parcells all the time. Look, there's a way to win every game. You just got to figure it out. And Andy Reid basically is saying that. I don't feel like an underdog. There's a way to win every game, and I got to figure it out. America doesn't think they're an underdog either, no, apparently. Of course they don't. No. The betting splits on Kansas City, everything is 67%, 70%. It just, it's, it's wild to think about. And again, we mentioned the stat with Patrick Mahomes earlier, 11-1-1 one one ATS as an underdog in his career with 10 of those wins coming out right. Uh, the, the former Eagles and now first-year 49er, Javon Hargrave, um, he, of course, lost to Kansas City in the Super Bowl last year as a member of the Philadelphia Eagles. And he said this week, quote, I think the loss is the only thing I think about. News or noise, that type of motivation for Hargrave. Yeah, he's going to need it because if you watch the tape, we've had a bunch of guests on today, right? And all they complained about is the effort and the intensity of the defensive front of the 49ers is not there. Mm -hmm. And so he's going to have to transpose that into thinking about it. It's not about thinking about it. It's about doing it, right? He's going to have to play much better than he did in the first two playoff games. Just as a follow-up, obviously we know the history that Kyle Shanahan has had in big games in the, the second half, fourth quarter that, is, that have fallen apart. Um, is that something that stays with you? Like, is that something that when you get to the second half of this game, maybe he's holding his clipboard a little bit tighter? Is that a, a, a worry or concern? No, I think it's a little bit like you have to. And I say this all the time. You have to as a head coach. You've got to take the first quarter and evaluate it and say, is this what we thought? And then you take the second and the third quarter and you say, OK, what do we have to do to win this game? What's the adjustments? And then you take the fourth quarter and it's a standalone game. What do we have to do to win this game? Mm -hmm. Forget everything else. And they've done that, right? They've done a really good job of winning that fourth quarter. They've come from behind in two games and won them. And they got to look like you said when we first sat down after the game against Detroit, you said they almost covered. They're, I mean, <laughs> they're up 10. They're up 10. It was, a, you know, I mean, and so give them credit. Sure. I, and I, I hope that not put in that situation uh, <laughs> come Super Bowl Sunday, but knowing this postseason experience that they have been able to come back in the second half, I think is significant for a guy like Kyle Shanahan. Now, this is something that you don't hear every day, but a star from the Las Vegas Raiders actually wants the Chiefs to win this game. Why, you might ask? Well, it's M Max Crosby, first and foremost. But he says that he wants the Raiders to win so that the, that he, excuse me, that he wants the Chiefs to win so that the Raiders can be the team to take them down. I'll well, take them off the pedestal. Was I the was talking to an NFL head coach last night. We happened to be at the same place for dinner, and we were talking about this. And, and, and he competes in the AFC, and he's rooting for the Chiefs because he wants them to kind of get to that exhaustion point you know oh, that's like like okay you've won it everything's great now let's take a step back i don't know if that's really logical because they have guys on their team that are, have such competitive stamina that i don't think you're going to be getting them to take a step back we saw yesterday a little bit of leaked audio maybe mics open that weren't supposed to be open with baker mayfield talking to steve young when he was on the set of a show talking about coming back to Tampa um, and Baker Mayfield has said we want to get the band back together him and Mike Evans coming back and bringing a, a back a number of pieces from a team that this year made it to the playoffs and, and got a playoff win news or noise Baker back well I think I think Baker back is to get Mike Evans back Baker's got to be very friendly in terms of getting Mike Evans <laughs> back I think Baker can't you know be the guy that takes all the money now he's going to get paid right they're going to pay him but I think Baker's got to understand that what made him 
almost the comeback player of the year. What made them a playoff team was the receivers and the skill players around them. They did it without a running game, right? Yeah. They had that dry spell, but they're going to need the cap room. They went through the cap hell this year, the Brady years. They went through that. I think now they've got to figure out how to do it. And, and look, let's face it, you just can't be greedy. If you're that second-level quarterback, you can't be greedy. You, can, you got to be able to say, okay, I'll take some incentives. I'll take some championship titles to get there because you need really good players around you. Mm -hmm. We all do. Is, is Mike Evans appreciated enough for how good he has been in his career? Every year, you can guarantee a 1,000 yards from this guy. He's so good, but the, I think what happens to Mike sometimes, he has a bad moment. Like he did against, you know, in the first playoff game where against Philadelphia, you know, he's, you expect him to make every catch, right? Mm -hmm. And then he did it against Detroit, right? So he's well, kind of... You're like, it, how do you make that catch and miss that one? Yeah, like What's he goes happening? back and forth. He's always... <laughs> kind of, but I think he, he's a great player. And look, he's going to be out there in the open market. I think they almost have to franchise him and take their chances with Baker because I think look Baker one thing when you get cut and you bounced around the league you kind of as quarterback you want to go that's what made the Daniel Jones things ridiculous like where who was going to steal Daniel Jones from the Giants nobody okay that's the answer to that test okay the same thing here who's going to steal Baker from the Bucks? pretty much nobody no. because he means and, and why would Baker want to leave so I think I would franchise Evans and then take my chances with Baker. We've been talking a lot this week about the field and field conditions. And for a while, we've been talking about turf in the National Football League. Roger Goodell said some players actually prefer artificial turf. The PA says, no, it's just the kickers. <laughs> news or noise? I think that's news. I mean, you got to I mean, Goodell's selling it. He believes it. Somebody's told him this. I mean, like I know the league. Look, they make so much this league. They got to put the players first, right? We got to have that. I don't know if it's the reason why Aaron Rodgers got hurt with the Achilles, because it could happen on grass, too. Let's be clear. Yes. Oh, which, by the way, speaking of Achilles, I don't know if you saw Kirk Cousins' dance moves on the oh, I stage. I didn't see it on the on... McAfee. No, I heard oh, about it, though. Oh, my gosh. He, they had the cast of Magic Mike up on the stage. It's Kirk of Cousins and did. Cam Jordan, and of they're getting they down. But I was like... This guy just had Achilles surgery how long ago? And he's already out here dancing, moving, and grooving. I'm tired of the Aaron Rodgers throwing a football on the field conversation. I think it was uh, need him to dance. It was Kleiman on Twitter who, who said that. Going on. Yeah. I'm going to have to show you the video in the commercial break. So much more to come on the Lombardi line. Stay with us live from Media Row. Hold up. Instantly, DraftKings showing up big for the Super Bowl. You got me feeling like, like Jimmy Johnson in the 90s. Only thing else I gotta say is, how about the missed and bonus bets? Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and turn a $5 Super Bowl bet into 200 instantly in bonus bets. The crown is yours. Nailed it. Nobody gets more betting tips and plays than VEASAN Pro subscribers. VEASAN's hosts and guests are professional bettors, and now keeping up with their advice is easier than ever. With pro tips, VEASAN experts give their best insight on air and online every show. And only VEASAN Pro subscribers get them live and can check out our running list on VEASAN.com anytime. Check out the pro tips section of VEASAN.com and get the best of VEASAN in one easy stop. VEASAN, the sports betting network. And then there was one. We are set for Super Bowl 58 right here in Las Vegas. I'm Dave Ross at VEASAN, the sports betting network. Let's get into the numbers and really not a lot of change over the course of the last two weeks. The money line right now, the price tag is the Niners at minus $1.30. The Chiefs can get some small plus money at plus $1.10. Of course, the spread right now been sitting right around two. We saw it go down as low as one, as high as two and a half. Right now, still at that two mark, minus hour 10 either way. And how about the total? Virtually like the old game show, Card Sharks freeze at 47 and a half. Not a whole lot of movement there. So again, right now, it is the Niners land two, Chiefs on the money line at plus hour 10, and that total set at 47 and a half with one game left to go to decide the NFL season. For the latest odds, injury reports, and betting splits, go to vsun.com. On Super Bowl Sunday, do you want to watch network hosts interview celebrities pretending they like football? Or do you want to talk about betting? 
Start your morning with the sweat at 8 a.m. Eastern as DraftKings top analysts give their final thoughts on the Chiefs and Niners. Then check out the Lombardi line at 10 a.m. Eastern and hear from three-time Super Bowl champion Michael Lombardi about how he's approaching the game. If Pacheco is a big day, they're still going to give it to Mahomes. They're going to say that the reason he played good was because of Mahomes. After the Lombardi line, you'll get the legend himself, Brent Musburger, as he talks with analysts and professional handicappers to get you ready for kickoff. Then at 1, catch a special edition of Follow the Money with Mitch Moss and Pauly Howard as they give their picks and prop bets for the big game. Finally, hear Gil Alexander on a special edition of a numbers game starting at 4 p.m. Eastern, leading right into kickoff of Super Bowl 58. Spend your Super Bowl Sunday talking betting with VEASAN, the sports betting network. Nobody covers the biggest betting event of the year like VEASAN. And for VEASAN Super Week, we're broadcasting live from three locations across Las Vegas, the site of Super Bowl 58. Our analysts are breaking down line movement, prop markets, injuries, and more to make sure you have all the info and analysis you need to bet the big game. Become a VEASAN Pro subscriber to gain access to betting splits, our Super Bowl betting guide picks from all the VEASAN experts, and more. Head to VEASAN.com slash pro. Elevate your sports betting game with VEASAN's exclusive betting splits. Stay ahead with real-time market trends and track bet percentages on any matchup. Then uncover the edge by comparing them to the amount of bets placed to find out where the sharp money is headed. Upgrade to VEASAN Pro to access betting splits, live odds, line moves, power ratings, and in-depth game analysis. Go to VEASAN.com slash subscribe to join VEASAN, the sports betting network. This is the Lombardi Line, live from Media Row for Super Bowl 58 on VSIN, the sports betting network. It's DraftKings Network Super Week. This is the Lombardi Line, this segment presented by 1-800-Flowers.com. DraftKings official flowers for Valentine's. We have had a number of incredible guests throughout the hour. And prior to us getting onto the program live earlier today, Rich Gannon stopped by and had a nice conversation with Michael and I, former NFL MVP, went to a Super Bowl with the Raiders in the early 2000s, now doing great work on CBS Sports Network and Sirius XM NFL Radio. Here's a snippet of our conversation, which starts off with a pretty nails prediction from Rich Gannon last week. So credit where credit is due, because last time when we talked to you, getting set for the NFC and AFC championship, we asked you who was going to be in the Super Bowl. You said Chiefs 49ers, so well done. Get Take your little victory lap well, first. You know, look, sometimes you guess right, but I, I just love what I saw from the Kansas City defense the last month of the season, really the last two months. And I, I was not surprised to see him going to Baltimore and really get after Lamar Jackson. And as I said, we're here in Vegas. I'm not a gambler, but if I had my last five hours, I told you guys this last week, I would never bet against Patrick Mahomes and a guy to have a critical situation. I think he's the best in the business. Michael, we talk a lot about yeah. who, who the best quarterback is. I said, forget all that. He's the best player in the NFL. Yeah, he really is. And, and Andy's such a great designer and what they've been able to do with their offense. So how do you think, you know, Spagnuolo, you've competed against his defense. How do you think Shanahan's going to approach this because the Baltimore approach was not very good. We know that. How do you think he will approach it? More like Buffalo did and spread them out a little bit? You know, despite it being a fairly close game, Ravens running backs had six carries in that game. I know. Six carries, which is really uh, just simply unacceptable. Look, Kyle's a smart guy. He doesn't want to get his young quarterback in a, in a, in a shootout against Steve Spagnuolo. They have to be able to run the ball. Christian McCaffrey has to be a big part of the running game. But also, Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk. It could be bubble screens. It would be getting the ball out in the perimeter on first down. They have to have success on the early downs, and they have to stay out of third and seven-plus situations yeah. because that's really where the pressure shows up, even second along situations. So, you know, that's not what they want with their young quarterback. The one thing about Brock Purdy, I, I love everything about his game. He's, he's done a terrific job. He's been – I call him the Rodney Dangerfield of, of NFL quarterbacks. He gets no respect. He gets no respect. But, <laughs> but let me say this about him. He's six feet and a half inch tall. If you go back and look at the first half against Green Bay and the first half against Detroit, push up inside yep. and those A-gaps really affects him. Chris Jones is six foot eight, 310 pounds. There's no one better in football at pushing and collapsing the pocket. No quarterback likes to work from a congested, muddy pocket, and that's what I would do if I was trying to get after Brock Purdy. But Kyle's smart. He's going to try and avoid that. I think that's changed the launch point a little right. bit too, Michael. Get, at, get him out on the edge, some play-action game. Don't, 
don't force this kid to have to function as a pocket passer for 60 minutes. You know, it's funny. You, you mentioned that, and I've been talking about that. The last Super Bowl, third and seven, Chris Jones pushed Persons back into the pocket, and Garoppolo didn't have a way to throw the ball. And it was a bad throw, and, of course, that drive was over. I think it's the same thing. If they don't keep the paint clean, he's going to have a hard time. I thought Detroit did a great job of pushing that paint. They did, and I think you, you make, bring up a great point because – I'm not trying to compare Garoppolo and and Brock Purdy, but you know Garoppolo is not a six five, two hundred thirty five pound guy either. You know, so I think that's a big part of it. The thing about Chris Jones is is he comes to life in the big moments. Uh, his motor doesn't always run hot, yeah. but but I'll tell you it, when it's running warm <laughs> and it doesn't cool down, he can be a handful for any good it, offensive line. You watch the Buffalo game and you don't think it's Chris Jones. He's pad yeah. levels high. He's yep. all, you know, they're running right at him. And then you put the Baltimore game on you. It's like, oh, wait a minute. That yeah. guy's really good. Until late in the game where he just ran out of yeah. gas. Which, which, you know what happens though? <laughs> well, you're chasing I'll, a guy like Lamar Jackson around. Exactly. But, minutes. you know, I mean, the two Super Bowls that I won with the Patriots, the opposing team ran out of gas. Yeah. I mean, Atlanta got tired, right? E. Freeney had one of his, he just went in the Hall of Fame. He, it was, he was the Freeney of old in that game until the second half. And the same thing with the Seattle front. So if, if they can keep it close and get them tired, they have a better chance. There's no question. I think conditioning is certainly a, 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 an important part of this game late in the game. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a question of who wants it the most. I think you know we're, we're here at the biggest game and, and the biggest stage, and uh, we know what's at stake in this one. So, Michael, you know what it's like to win one. You know what it's like to lose one. Yeah. I don't, unfortunately for me, I know what it's like to lose one, and uh, it stays with you forever. And, and I know Kyle uh, more than anybody, you know, having been so close a number of times, uh, is going to have his best stuff on Sunday. Well, and that's why I know you talk about not betting against Patrick Mahomes and the legacy that they're building in Kansas City, but I also get this sense that I'm like, I want it so much for Kyle Shanahan. I feel like he's due for a good one in a full game to come out on his end, but an important piece of that is certainly going to be the defense, which has suffered since Christmas. We talk about the adjustments in a positive way Kansas City has made since Christmas. Feels like the 49ers defense mm -hmm. has taken a tick down, and I'm not sure why. There was an article that came out this week, Steve Wilkes was, was quoted as saying the effort level in the Detroit game was unacceptable. Uh, Sean Gibson came out and said the same. You know, that when we watched the film, it was hard to watch. I don't understand how that could happen in a championship game. Uh, when you go back and look at that defensive line, a lot of resources, a lot of money tied up in that group. You look at Chase Young, uh, Nick Boza, you look at uh, Hargrave, you, you look at uh, Armstead. Uh, they did not play well against the run against the, the Packers and against the Lions. And to me, that group has to, I think, own the line of scrimmage. And it's going to be a challenge. I think both tackles for the Chiefs, Donovan Smith, played, be played maybe his best game against the Ravens. And our guy, Jawan Taylor, he showed up and played, yeah. he played better I against the, the Ravens. Donovan well. Smith at least lined up on the, on the line of scrimmage, I mean, for the last two games. I mean, he hasn't been in the backfield. He hasn't been the wing on they the They try team. hard, though. They try <laughs> hard. Know. They try and get what they can get. But, look, I, I, I think that – I think if the 49ers defense – can play well up front they, they have not uh, they have grossly underperformed here the last couple of weeks yeah I think there's no question and, and that's the challenge right and I think they've got to protect the edges Chase Young's not very good in the run game they've got to kind of find a way to handle Michael, that they got receivers cracking on him I, mean, I know I, he just disappears I mean I, you know look I know we get paid to rush the passer I know getting sacks is a big thing but like you got to be a complete player at that position he's to my opinion when you look at that trade, he's been very disappointing. Really disappointing. And nobody likes to run past the quarterback more than him. And the worst place to be in football is past the quarterback. <laughs> I, I love playing against guys like sure that. Sure you, you do. Just run right by, just step up in the A-gap, yeah. trust, <laughs> trust the security of that protection, you get the ball out. But, yeah, he just doesn't uh, – he doesn't impact the game no. like we thought he would. But th there's an effort piece to it, at least visually, that throws me off. Because I understood when you're with the Washington Commanders and it's like every single day is a grind and nothing's working no matter what you do. But then you join a Super Bowl contending team and an opportunity to free things up for other guys and an opportunity for you to shine. And you're not you, taking advantage. You know advantage. what I would do? If I was coaching him, I'd get a bunch of cut-ups of him. And then I get a bunch of cut-ups of Max Crosby. And yeah. I'd just sit in a room and I'd say, just, just, just watch him. You yeah. tell me who's who's trying harder. You ch tell me where the effort level is. Max Crosby's motor runs hot all the time. Yeah. He never takes a playoff. And I look at Chase Young, I simply don't see it. You don't get it. And yeah. I, and, and Other than me, the fact he was the second pick overall. That's all everybody wants to talk about. But it's how you play. It's how Purdy plays. It's how he plays. But here's what I, I think to me what, what what's going to be the difference in the game. The kryptonite for Mahomes, for any quarterback, is the line. And if they, like you said, if they don't, in 19, when they lost to Tampa, Tampa's defensive front dominated Destroy that game. Them. They and were banged up, though. Right, I get that. But this, I mean, both tackles are the weak link. Donovan Smith and Juwan Taylor have had their issues. They played better against the Ravens. I think, I think. 
Andy's been very patient with that group. I think they've done some things. I think Patrick climbing the pocket. Patrick, Patrick Mahomes is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. When the, when the edges come up, to step up and step out. He's yeah. really good at that. Yeah. And he'll have to do that again this week. Nick Bosa can still create some havoc. He had two sacks against the Lions. I think there's, without question, he's their best pass rusher. No question. As a former Raider, how much do you hate seeing a Chiefs logo on the Raiders he locker room right too, now? Though. We that's stole true. Him from the that's Chief. true. You we know what, though? I would simply Chiefs. say this, and, and the, the gentleman that's in the <laughs> Hall of Fame that Michael and I worked for, Al Davis, he'd be he'd be turning over his grave this week. When you look at two teams, the, the, the team that was across the bay from us yep. in, in, in when we were at Oakland, San Wars. Francisco representing the NFC, and, of course, the team that he – did not particularly care for in the AFC West. Who the team that's dominated? They won eight straight AFC West titles. Al would not be happy with this matchup. Nor would he have him be happy watching him run around his facility. That's what I'm I saying. Know. Like that's the thing that they're. I don't me get out. it. I, like we and and all we talk about is the Raider way. It's unbelievable. That's not the Raider way. One last thing before we let you go. Just this uh, experience of Super Bowl week how it's changed from back in the day with you and now to the way that it's blown up. And Yeah, as Michael will tell you, we had a one-week turnaround, which Horrible. was devastating for that us. That killed us. We had an older team. Uh, we didn't handle it well. We had some guys that went to San Diego and, and, and th- thought it was a, a, a fraternity party weekend. <laughs> and uh, we had one guy that didn't even show up for the game. We didn't handle it well. It was a hot day, believe it or not, in San Diego. Really hot. We could make a ton of excuses. We didn't play well. We turned the ball over. Uh, and it's unfortunate. You know, you get one crack at it, and it just it, it still to this day breaks my heart to know that not everybody had 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 invested the same effort and energy into that week. Yeah, it was a killer. Oh, yeah. Bad memory. Well, hopefully all the guys out there on no the field Shania this week are. No Shania Twain for the rest of my life. We'll have to and, dig and no into bon this Jovi. later. Bon Jovi was playing in the end zone after the game. As I, I was walking I did, off the field. I didn't know John was there. I didn't even remember that. I was in a daze, but Shania Twain was the halftime show. Never on the – if she's on the radio, it's off. <laughs> This is awesome. Thank you so much you for your time. We appreciate best. you. For me. So, Michael, when you hear "Let's Go Girls" at a restaurant or anything, oh, what, what happens? I have two rules on the radio. I'm not listening to Cat Stevens, and I'm not listening to Shania Twain. <laughs> Cat Stevens is just a personal thing with me. I can't stand the voice; it's irritating. You get a little Shania twitch. Twain is like a memory back to that day in Sandy. See what Rich said there. We had one game. It was one week before the game. Like, we just, we literally beat the Tennessee Titans and the great Steve McNair. And we then had to wait. And then we, then that was Sunday. We had a meeting at the Hilton Hotel where we used to do our after school dinners, after game dinners. And then we, the next day, we're flying down there and we had a practice. It was horrible. So, yeah, Shania Twain, no. No chance. <laughs> I can just like, I picture it in a movie. You get that twitch in your eye, the flashback oh, comes. It's like Pavlov's and... dog, yes. <laughs> we'll be right back wrapping things up here on the Lombardi line from Media Row next. Looking for a super offer for Super Bowl 58? DraftKings Sportsbook has you covered. New customers can bet on the big game and turn 5 bucks into 200 instantly in bonus bets. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code VEASAN. Only on the DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of Super Bowl 58 with code VEASAN. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-8. NY or text open Y in Connecticut help is available for problem gambling call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction void in Ontario bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance cdkng.com slash football for eligibility and deposit restrictions terms and responsible gaming resources Gear up for the ultimate betting event of the year with VEASAN Super Bowl Betting Guide, exclusive to VEASAN Pro subscribers. Get access to expert picks, including best bets from every member of the VEASAN staff. Unlock articles and analysis for all the prop markets and strategy breakdowns you won't find anywhere else. Give yourself an edge this Super Bowl and get the VEASAN Super Bowl Betting Guide by becoming a VEASAN Pro subscriber today at VEASAN.com slash pro. That's V-S-I-N dot com slash pro. If you didn't catch Follow the Money, here's what you missed. And I think, you know, we've talked about how much we like Shanahan quite a bit. The clock management, the game management stuff, he's not good at it. We saw it again, you know, several times, really at the end of the first half against the Packers. It was really, really bad. He scares me as much as Purdy, like if the moment is too big. Uh, Sure. I mean, because, you know, he spit up the 10-point lead in the last meeting between these teams in the Super Bowl. Not that's all his fault. And then the 28-3 debacle when he was the OC at Atlanta, which Peter King asked him about 
as well. So you have that. And then uh, it's also a, a, a buy for Andy Reid. Andy Reid with all this time to prepare. One of the best to ever do it in NFL history with that. So all that uh, would concern me if I'm a San Francisco fan and the fact that they haven't looked apart for the last month. That's the other thing. Um, it, it's you, you got to play like you're, you belong here. And they should have got beat by Green Bay and should have lost to Detroit. Follow the money weekdays at 7 a.m. Eastern, 4 a.m. Pacific on VEASAN, the sports betting network. Hey guys, Sean Stacking the Money Green here with my partner in picks, Ryan Real Money Kramer from the Sports Gambling Podcast. To let you know, alert the misses, date night is canceled this football season. Instead of checking out the latest rom com, tune into VEASAN every Friday night for our props, picks, and best bets in the National Football League. That's right. The Sports Gambling Podcast is live every Friday, 9 p.m. Pacific on VSIN, the Sports Betting Network. VSIN is thrilled to introduce a new VSIN.com tailor made to the evolved needs of today's sports bettors. Our upgraded navigation streamlines your journey, allowing you to swiftly access articles, videos, and podcasts. Whether you're tuning in live or catching up on your favorite shows, everything is just a click away. VSIN.com guarantees a fluid and responsive experience across all devices, ensuring you stay connected wherever you are. We have enhanced tools such as our betting splits and expert picks and introduce innovative features like parlay and odds calculators, all designed to make you a sharper better. Our how to bet section is perfect for beginners covering the fundamentals, while seasoned bettors can delve into our advanced betting strategies for the competitive edge you've been looking for. Sign up for free on VSIN.com or become a VSIN Pro subscriber where you can unlock unlimited access to every tool, expert picks, and insight that make VSIN the sports betting network. This is the Lombardi Line, live from Media Row for Super Bowl 58 on VSIN, the sports betting network. The last time I'm going to say it until next year. Yeah. We are live from Media Row. We're <laughs> wrapping up. Next year we could be at New Orleans. Let's yes. hope we're all there. I can't wait for that. DraftKings, please remember, send us out. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Get that memo <laughs> written down. We're we promise a... we will not eat too many beignets. Actually, that is a lie. I <laughs> plan to have powdered sugar all over all of my clothes that week. No question. Um, it's, so that's true. So funny story. I um, The first time that I ever worked a game out in, in New Orleans, I was doing a Tulane game. Uh-huh. And... I didn't know, like, pregame, part of their meal, half of it is just beignets from Cafe Dumont. They just bring that out. And so I'm wearing all black that day oh and having to, like, lean over to oh try boy. to, you know, not look completely embarrassing on television. Speaking of food, this segment, by the way, presented by DiGiorno. It's not delivery. It's DiGiorno. And in this hour, Michael, we got some pretty interesting news that came down. Yeah, I mean, it really is. I, 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 the Chip Kelly leaving a Big Ten school. California as a head coach I'm trying to get this through my brain I'm taking it very slow to then become an offensive coordinator of another Big Ten school in the Midwest and so I was asking you about this earlier this week because there were some rumors that Billy your boy O'Brien might leave that role which he just took earlier in January as the offensive coordinator at Ohio State to take the head coaching job at Boston College and there were you know different names that had been brought up but one rumor was Chip Kelly right and that's just the thought of that seemed absurd to me that a head coach uh, at UCLA would move on to take a coordinator job that now with conference realignment you're in the same league it's just wild to think about right and so and he like, was interviewing for all those those well, NFL he's been, jobs he's been trying to get out of UCLA right. he interviewed last year for the University of Cincinnati job I don't think many people knew about that and so he's been trying to get out of there in some form or some another which lends yourself to wonder why right like what is going on now I think college football is a, a landscape with no rules or regulations. Everybody can get the money, you know, coaches mm-hmm. can leave, players transfer, the portal, all that crap. And UCLA has never been one of those like USC, which has been fully engaged in football. Now they've got a great facility, all those things, but you know, this was Troy Aikman's hire, Chip Kelly. I mean, mm-hmm. Troy spent a lot of time getting this done. And for him to just go, I could see him going to become, I can't see him going to become the University of Cincinnati head coach. Didn't Mick Cronin leave Cincinnati to go to UCLA to be the basketball? Didn't that transfer? Okay. All right. I got that right. Okay, good. So, like, I'm just 
I'm just, it just shows you, it tells you a couple things. UCLA's not committed to football, according to Chip Kelly. Maybe that's wrong. But also that he doesn't want to be a head coach anymore, which is kind of an, like now he's doing this now. Like Chip Kelly, if he would have resigned back in December, okay? Let's just say he resigns in December. And he's available for all these jobs. He would have gotten this job, whether it was December or whether it was today. And then UCLA could have, their, their recruiting would have been destroyed. He's blowing up the program as he leaves out. Now all these kids can transfer. You know, all these people can go from, you know, all the recruits from UCLA can now transfer some. So if you got, if you beat UCLA on a kid, say Oregon beat somebody on him, you know, I'll yeah. take that kid. There's a complete ripple effect here, which includes, by the way, uh, Brett McMurphy, longtime ESPN, are doing great work now with the Action Network. He reported that the likely top candidate now is probably P.J. Fleck, who's the head coach at Minnesota. And then what happens to Minnesota and all of their – so there's just – there's so many layers to this. Yeah. Um, and with Chip Kelly, obviously, it was six lackluster years at UCLA. They went to three bowl games in that time. Nine and four was the best record that they had under him. But for as much as we want to talk about the UCLA side. Great hire for Ryan Day at Ohio State, you would think, because you know his offensive mind, and that's an area where oh, they've, I think the pressure they've had all the talent, but they haven't lived up to those expectations. No question, this year, but don't you feel? Year. I mean, Woody Johnson laid down the gauntlet to Robert Sala, right? And I think Ohio State's laid down a similar gauntlet to to uh, yeah. Ryan Day. It's well, either win I, or go home. That's why I think it's so important because you're losing Bill O'Brien, which I thought was an, an interesting, interesting hire. hire, right? Yeah, so, so did I. So I kind of think it's an upgrade at the offensive coordinator <laughs> position to get Chip Kelly there. But uh, I'm sure Patriot fans might now. But Boston College is taking Billy O'Brien now. Yeah. Billy O'Brien's back in college yeah. football, and Boston College is talking that's about look. This is a strange world to be in college football. Yeah. I mean, the University of Washington gets to the final four and their coach takes off right so it's like it's and I don't I don't fault Kalen the board for going to Alabama I really don't I don't fault Jet Fish for going to to Washington I mean players can transfer why can't coaches mm -hmm. yeah uh, and it'll it, Nick Saban by the way the newest member of college game day it appears he'll be is, good at he's it. gonna be excellent he'll be really good um, at it if they let him talk you know it, this is what we don't want is one minute soundbite next minute soundbite you need to let Nick kind of talk a little bit and let him share his knowledge that is not out there these last five minutes or so and of, of course you and Femi will be together tomorrow live breaking down the Super Bowl as you, from Circa. as you prepare yourself for the nervous energy yes, that I'm I'll be back Sunday on Sunday Sunday morning you're going to be a mess aren't you I will but I will be decked out in red and gold just I know get you ready will be for I know, that. but you're going to be a mess I can <laughs> tell been, I can tell this as already. if I'm not already <laughs> or just in day-to-day -day life regardless of a Super Bowl ahead but um, these last five minutes let's do a couple of fader follow props here because these are some of the more lopsided handle bets that we've seen so far we're talking like 90 or like every single bet has come in on this side. And so I want to see if you agree or would be more interested on the other side, starting with Brock Purdy to throw an interception. 96% of handle and 97% of the tickets that have come in on Brock Purdy to throw an interception have been on the yes fade or follow do you agree yeah i would follow that i mean it doesn't mean he's going to play poorly it just means that they're in so much man coverage that maybe he makes a bad throw and you know one of the things spagnola does a good job of is confusing the quarterback a little bit and so is you know that could happen there's a probability to hear i hope it doesn't but there could be i would say i would follow that it's interesting looking at the sack. not a strong follow though okay. a follow Okay, all right, all right. I, I hope he doesn't, but I could see him be the more likely of the two quarterbacks to throw one should there be one. Um, it's interesting looking at some of the sack props instead of it being over a half a sack. A lot of them are just over a quarter of a sack, and that's the number for Chris Jones. Everybody is taking the I, over. I strongly follow that. Yes. Because Feliciano, the guards inside, the guards have been the weak link of the San Francisco offensive line. Whereas, you know, we had Baldy on talking about the strength of the Kansas City line as their interior play. The weakness of the 49er line is that inside guard. We saw Detroit push him around. And I think that Chris Jones, early in the game, pad level down, I think he'll be a, he'll be a factor. We know a lot of guys like Patrick Mahomes to go over his rushing yards, but what about longest rush over 12 and a half yards? Again, another over that people are really liking. 99% of the handle, 98% of the bets. Fade or uh, follow? You know, usually you run for a first down, and that's 10 yards, right? So if he takes off and runs, and, and you know, I think to me he'll get over 12 and a half yards rushing. I really do. So I, I would follow that strongly as well. 
I, I'm just hoping that none of them take him in the end zone. Right, which, it, it, yeah, I agree with that. And that's really where you get in play. You know, we had that prop about him being the first player to score a touchdown. Because when you get down there, look, one thing we do know about Andy Reid, as much as he has changed what he wants to do offensively and running the football more and all that stuff, at the end of the day, when he gets in the red zone, he likes trickery. Mm -hmm. It almost cost him the mm -hmm. Buffalo game, right? <laughs> he likes trickery because he understands it. And this isn't, a, this isn't a knock on him at all. He understands that you have to do deceptive things to create separation in the red zone. And I think that's why he does it. And so that's why Mahomes could be the runner. I mean, I could see fake quarterback draw, throw a bubble pop pass. There's going to be some kind of trickery, like Chuck Pagano said, getting split mm -hmm. back, you know, the shuffle pass, all that stuff. We saw it, you know, the – the, the re double reverse to the reverse. I think we could see all that stuff. How about Christian McCaffrey? He was obviously the NFL's leading rusher, led the league in yards from scrimmage as well. His longest rush is being bet over 17 and a half. Can he pop one for over 18 plus? I think he could because once you break through that line, you can get going. You got to make a safety miss. You know what people I think they're going to need him to have. Right. That. So people, what people don't understand is every design run, the back is responsible for a tackler. So in every run, the back is responsible. Like, you can't block everybody, right? Since the quarterback doesn't block, it's an 11 on 10 game. So the back has to take somebody out with his movement, with his ability to be elusive, right? And McCaffrey's really good at that. So I think it, and that's how you get long runs. We've had a number of people come on our program and say they think George Kittle is going to have a day. Yeah, I do too. The betting public is all over George Kittle over his receiving yards at 49 and a half. You think that's a, a, a like too it. high number or it's no, good? No, I think it's a good play. I like it. I, I, I really do. I gave it out to a friend of mine who was in the Bahamas betting the DraftKings Act in the Bahamas as he's getting <laughs> sun all great. over his face. You can yes. DraftKings from everywhere, worldwide. They love it. Don't you love it, Stormy? So it's been a great week, though, hasn't it? This has been a lot of fun. It's been great to be here with you, and uh, I've really enjoyed being on Radio Row. It's been interesting to watch the cast of characters that come through. Uh, and I got to say, I think the best guest that we had on all week was Millie Lombardi. Oh, yeah, on the she made the star yesterday. of it. Yeah. You know, when, when we had Bonnie on, I was going to say, you know, Millie's been right about most things in life. I got to give her that. She has a great perception of of uh you know what is right so she could pro she could be a scout so well she already thinks she is one so why not <laughs> I, I, she's looking over your shoulder what do oh, you think about why would you do that you're an idiot <laughs> so good again make sure you catch michael and femi tomorrow live from circa resort and casino and then we will be back on sunday with our final thoughts on the big game ahead of kickoff that's a wrap for the lombardi line for media row have a great day and good luck with your bet Looking for a super offer for Super Bowl 58? DraftKings Sportsbook has 